everybody, it's Teacher Kelly, and right now we are gonna read three hens and a peacock. Have any of you guys ever seen real hens or a peacock? I have seen real hens on a farm, and I've seen a peacock before at a zoo, and you wanna know something really cool? In my room, I have a real peacock feather from that zoo. They let you take them uh, if they come out of the fence. The zookeeper said it was okay for us to take one, so I have some real ones. So maybe one day I will bring it in and show you guys what a real peacock feather looks like. They're very cool. All right, it says, things were quiet on the trucker's farm. The cows chewed their um, cud. The hens clucked and pecked and laid their eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop to buy uh, tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until... <gasps> that peacock showed up. Look at that peacock. It says, the cows and the hens and the old hound kept right on doing what they um, always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spreaded his fancy feathers um, and set to shrieking. I can't make a peacock noise or else I would, but you can imagine, or you could probably look it up on YouTube, what a peacock sounds like. It says, eventually the peacock wandered down the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his biggest, loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped for a closer look. It would be really interesting to see a peacock. They're very, very, very pretty. The blue in pictures of them don't really do it justice in, in the light. They're very, very shiny. They're really pretty. It says, Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock and they all bought tomatoes, corn, eggs, and milk. Business on Tucker's farm was booming. Look at that. It said everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. Look at that big old peacock. It says, but trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly. He just struts around screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we um, do all the work. There's the hens and there's the peacock and the dog and the cows. It says, the peacock had heard every word. For days he moped about moaning and groaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Huh, uh, clunk, open hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why don't let, or sorry, why not let the peacock stay here to be useful while um, you hens take the glamorous job down by the road. There's the dog talking to all the animals. It says, the three hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan. Yes, it's a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy our feathers tonight and nothing but our brightest um, beads, bangles, and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut the best of them. Peacock perked up. Let's do it, um, he uh, declared. Tomorrow, I'll stay here. Sit on your nest, cluck, and we'll get a, um, sorry, a gussied up, said the hens. We'll be so glamorous. It says, at sunrise the next morning, the hens strutted down the road. Look at all of them in their necklaces. Some of the necklace looks like some of the ones we have in our classroom. It says the peacocks marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside to go sit on the eggs. 
The hens flocked by the road, waiting for cars. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squawked and flapped their wings in a flurry of feathers, but every car whizzed right, um, right on by. The peacock sucked in his tummy. He wiggled from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny hen house door. His front half was in, his back half was out. It says, down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still no car stopped. Finally, the, pink, sorry, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath, <gasps> pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not fit, or sorry, he could not lay a single egg. Not one. Uh-oh. Said so the old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's the peacock doing in the hen house, said Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing down by the road? No one, uh, or sorry, uh, not a one of them is up here laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we ain't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Brown. We need the peacocks down um, there stopping cars. It says, when the peacock heard that, he smiled. The biggest smile um, you've ever saw on a bird's beak. There's him smiling. It says, I'm helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth until he popped out of the crammed hen house. Then he trotted off um, to the hens. Uh-oh, look, some of the feathers came off of the peacock. It says, the exhausted hens we're all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day. We could get one car to stop. It's true. Why most of them don't even slow down. Oh, poor the hens. They're so tired and worked out. It says the peacock met the hens as they um, triggered up the road. I uh, I can tell you I'm not good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen nodded. I put on my stel stellar um, strut, and even I couldn't stop a single car, she said. I have to hand it to you, fancy feathers. Your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked re relieved. So the hens marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down the road. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening, and things were quiet again on Tucker's farm. The end. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the story about the three hens and the peacock. Bye!